Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the ARI application informational Zoom session for our 2023-2024 ARI cohort. I am R. Simmer McCoy. I am the residency coordinator at Artists in Residence in the Everglades. And I want to go ahead and introduce uh, our other leadership roles here at ARI. So I will hand it over first to our creative director, Cornelius Tulloch. And afterwards, you will hear from our operations, uh, Christina Rennes. And after her, you will hear from our tech and content website, Heather Roy. Hello, I'm Cornelius Tella, Aries' current artistic director, um, working on storytelling of artists here at the residency and working alongside this amazing group here, and I'll pass it on to Christina. Hi, everyone. I'm Christina Renis. I'm the operations and programs manager here at Aerie, and I'm really excited to get started with you guys. Hey everyone, I'm not a uh, prime time ready, but this is uh, Heather Roy. I run the tech and uh, some of the admin behind the application and have been fielding some of your questions that come in through email and um, I'm happy to be here. I love Ari and we're so excited to see our next cohort. Thank you so much. And once again, I am R. Summer McCoy, the residency coordinator and my job is to support uh, make sure that the artists are cared for while they're in the park, but also if you have any amazing proposals, any projects that you want to see come to fruition, I will be your point person in those things. So now I'll hand it over to Cornelius to tell us about Aries' mission. Yes, and um, if you don't know by now, Aries stands for Artists in Residence in the Everglades and really working towards empowering artists to think creatively and critically about their relationship um, to the environment with the mission of revealing new paths forward. So we're really interested to see how artists from different disciplines and backgrounds are able to not only explore and imagine this environment of the Everglades, but see how their own practice applies to it and help us move forward um, to pushing narratives of both um, climate and racial justice forward. And the residency has existed since 2001 and have welcomed over 2000 artists from multiple disciplines and backgrounds to our residency that's in partnership with Everglades National Park. And if we go on to the next slide, I can explain a little bit more about who we are at ARI. And so seeing that it's founded in 2001 and with efforts from both the park um, Chief of Op Interpretation, Alan Scott, and artist Donna Markser. ARI is a 501c3 nonprofit um, that works within the National Park and also within the international art landscape. So being able to bridge this space between both environment um, and artists and partnering with the National Park to really empower artists to think creatively and critically about their relationship to the environment with the mission, as I said, of revealing new paths forward. And then we can go on to our next um, about our promise. And I'll just um, read these next statements. Um, and inc our inclusivity statement stating that the preservation of the Everglades and exploration of environmental issues are cornerstones of ARIES programming. And we are adhering to these roots while moving forward to establish a foundation for a more inclusive roadmap that includes more diversity in our artists, programmings, audience, and leadership team. And we know that there cannot ever be environmental justice without social and racial justice. And we see art really as a valuable connective resource to raise awareness and provide creative solutions. Um, and seeing this platform and responsibility to support artists who are seeking these things and are grateful to learn with them and hope that you all will join us and on these efforts and looking forward to our next cohort to help us reimagine some of these conversations and really wanting to honor native land as um, we are working within the National Park, but also more importantly, the greater Everglades. So ARI acknowledges that indigenous peoples and nations, including the former Tequesta and Calusa tribes, the current Seminole tribe of Florida and the Miccosukee tribe of Indians of Florida have stewarded through generations, the land and the waterways of the area that is now South Florida 
and we honor and respect these communities past, present, and future who protect the Everglades and include art making and storytelling in their culture. And then the next slide, we have a little video about Ari. I don't think we're going to play it today, um, but essentially you can learn a little bit about our residency because we definitely want to spend time um, getting to answer questions and, and speaking to you all a little bit more. But on our website, we have an informational video um, featuring multiple artists and advisors who are a part of ARI, where you can learn more information about the residency and a very overscale view of the different things that we do, the type of work we engage with, and learn a little bit more about our partnership with the park in taking on this residency. And then I'd like to pass it on for the ARI residency overview. So we're just going to talk a little bit about what the residency entails, what we expect from artists, um, and what we give back to the artists. Next slide, please. So ARIES residency program, we not only provide artists with the opportunity to live and work inside the Everglades National Park, uh, but we also create channels so that you can learn more about what it means to live here, to work here, um, to create here. We provide resources like our South Florida collections, like at our visitor center with different activities that you can engage in. We have researchers, we have scientists, we have biologists. We have different folks that can come to you and help you with conversations that you are trying to broaden about living in this landscape and what it means to be connected to the landscape. Next slide. The residency provides you with a $4,000 fellowship grant. This is given to each fellow and a one month residency in the Everglades National Park, as well as a $1,500 travel and food stipend. Housing is provided, furnished, air conditioning, single apartment or dorm style apartment with a shared kitchen for the length of your residency, which is one month. Everglades National Park welcomes area fellows as park volunteers during their residency, providing them the same liability insurance that all National Park Service volunteers receive. Park experiences are coordinated, coordinated co what just happened to my mouth? Coordinated by ARI and Everglades National Park, providing residences, residents with resources for exploring the various habitats and wildlife. And this, of course, is our amazing creative director during his residency in 2022. Just giving a little sound bite, a little clip of his experience. And here he says, Ari was a breath of fresh air for his practice and he needed to exhale from his daily routine of being an artist to just escape and be in this space where he could create at a pace that allowed him to experiment, explore and reimagine what his own practice looked like. So here are some requirements for the residency. We require one public activation, which means that you will engage the park in some way, shape or form, whether that be a workshop, whether that be uh, making a decision that you want to create in the park and have people come and see what you're creating, uh, have a talk. It runs, it can run as, as big or as small as you would like. But the whole point of artists coming into the park is to engage the community to learn more about what it means to be an artist and be connected to landscape. We ask that you do an Instagram takeover, which is a week long artist takeover of the area account. Show everyone what you've been doing. Give us some insight into the education that you've been receiving. Allow us to see the resources that other artists can tap into that you've been able to, um, to assess. Next, we ask for one donation of a work to the Everglades National Park, and the deed of gifts must be offered within one year. We ask that you participate in our Airy Ask program, which is normally facilitated by myself or Cornelius Tullip. But if you want to shape your Airy Ask in the way uh, that goes more with your practice, or maybe you have a different idea, we're always willing to work with artists. We want you to shine um, as much as possible. 
and selected applicants must spend the entire allotted month in the Everglades. We understand that people have a lot to do. We understand that sometimes things happen and we're not speaking to those occurrences, but we are talking about we would like dedicated individuals to come to our residency, allow themselves to be fully immersed into this, this initiative and take the time to spend one month just creating, just learning and just educating themselves in the park. So here we have just a few of the area events and programs that we've done uh, over time. Recently, and what's in uh, on view right now is passages with the inclusion of Sydney Ma Bear's work, Queen of the Swamp. Here we have Atea Bayi performing at Flamingo Visitor Center, Diana Eusebio's dye workshop at the Visitor Center as well, at Ernest Cole Visitor Center, Maya Freelon doing her tissue paper workshop and down below National Water Dance. Thank you, Arsmer. And um, we have a lot of really exciting events and programs that are coming up, which we'll talk about at the end of this presentation. Um, but hello again, I'm Christina. I'm gonna talk through the 2024 application process for this year. And what are the ins and outs of the application? What do you need to know and also just a reminder that in the chat, you can start um, asking questions in the Q&A box, and then we're going to have the last 20 minutes of this time dedicated to questions. Just... So eligibility requirements to apply. There is an entry There is an entry fee, which is $20. You can contact info at airy.org to apply for a fee waiver if it is needed. Um, our other thing is you must be an emerging or professional artist of any discipline, including but not limited to visual, performing, performing can be music or dance or um, any kind of performance or literary arts, which can be writing, poetry, playwriting, um, and pursuing research and development stage of artistic projects and explorations. So in collaboration with both Arsper and Cornelius, I'm also part of a big, a big part of putting together the kind of programs and developments that we're wanting to put forth through ARI. So having someone who's motivated to try to put projects out and has a vision for how they want to come to the residency is something that we're definitely looking for. You must be 21 and up. You must be eligible to travel to the United States and ARI is not responsible for procuring or sponsoring visas to the United States. And as Arsimir mentioned, each part participant, excluding um, exceptions that can be asked about, um, each participant must commit to being in residence for the full month assigned to them and comply with contractual residency requirements. Um, we're gonna cover most of what that is in this presentation I have already, but I would really recommend looking at our website and our FAQ under the application portal because that will answer a lot of your questions that you may have. So Cornelius is gonna talk about the prompt and what we're looking for and then it'll come back to me. <laughs> Yes, um, and as some of you may have already entered into the application and began to look, but really at ARI, we're really looking um, to work with artists who are really dedicated and authentic with clear interests of interpreting the environment and nature and the stories within them, um, more specifically of the Everglades or how they may connect to other landscapes as well, but really being able to find artists who are presenting meaningful answers um, to the application prompts that inspire the connection of discourse through their work and really just showing that you took the time to really look at the Everglades contextually, um, the residency, contemporary issues and storytelling really is at the forefront um, of what we're looking for as we have had an abundance of artists coming in and, and, and really applying themselves to this space and the work with Airy, um, but also really looking to connect to local communities and people here. I think the, the residency really grounds you um, in the space of the Everglades and provides an opportunity for so many new experiences. Um, and then the next slide, if we can go to the 2024 prompt um, and really looking at <clears throat> storytelling. So how do you define innovative storytelling um, and how can this innovation be used as a tool to educate, preserve and celebrate the natural environment? So now we see from so many different mediums, I think that's the beauty about our application process and the residency is itself, it's interdisciplinary. 
it involves people from so many different um interdisciplinary many different disciplines backgrounds ages career levels that it really shows um in the applications who has really thought about this space critically and thought about how their practice can apply um to the everglades and really thinking about storytelling especially in contemporary times as we see so many different mediums in ways that artists and people are working with and that they collaborate with so really looking for those who are um, really innovatively telling stories um, through their practice, through the mediums that they choose to use um, and, and who they choose to work with and how they choose to work. So I think I'm really excited to see what type of applications and thoughts come. It could be something that you're already doing in your practice, something that you may be wanting to begin to build into your practice, but it really shows through the kind of responses um, that we get in the application and really making each um, meaningful and intentional um, in the, the the prompts themselves and the responses and really being open and honest. Um, and I think, you know, a residency like this can seem like, oh, do you need experience already having been in the in nature and the environment? And, and you know, for many of us, even with me, like I, I'm definitely a nature person, but it, I even living in South Florida, the Everglades, um, I had only been once. So some of this may be new to certain people. And I think that this opens up the conversation to see how do we create access in, in this environment. And in the next slide, we'll, I believe Christina is gonna go over the application timeline. Thank you, Cornelius. Yeah, so the application's open officially on September 20th. You can go to the link in our bio on our Instagram. Um, also, if you're subscribed to our newsletter, you got it there, but you can also go to our website at airy.org um, slash residency, and you will find in there to apply through submittable. Again, please read through all of the FAQ and everything before you apply, because it's just important to really get context and be able to have the right information and intentionality to bring this application as Cornelius was speaking to. So applications close at 200 applications whenever that's met or on October 5th at 11.59 p.m. Um, you will receive a notification about whether acceptance or whatever it ends up being for the notification in December. Um, and then the adjudications for area applications are assessed in two rounds. So we first have a selection of jurors and then we have, um, which was selected um, as different community members and people who are invested in the environment and the arts and different community leaders. And then we also have our national advisory committee, which also consists of industry experts and community leaders. And to learn more about our adjudication process, you can also learn about the national advisory committee on our website. So the application requirements, um, all of this will be on submittable when you open it. So in, in addition to general contact information, the application asks for a artist statement, a biography, a resume or CV, a response to the prompts, prompts about your intended work. So we have our main theme, which is um, guiding the rest of our questions, but we also have three additional, three or four additional questions that we ask for response to as well, as well as optional information about diversity and demographics. So um, for visual suite, one of the things that I love about a residency and I think is unique is that we do try to have people represented from each discipline. Um, however, because every dis each arts discipline is different, we have different requirements. So for visual music and video applicant applications, please provide five to 10 samples. For literary applicants, please provide two samples with a 10 page maximum for each sample. So 20 pages in total. So if you do poetry, it could only be 20 pages worth of poetry. Um, and so, but what's important here is because of the different structuring that we have within our application for different mediums, um, we don't have a minimum in there, but no work samples will result in automatic disqualification. So before you click submit, make sure that your work is there, make sure your links are live. We've had applicants in the past who linked to film work, but the link didn't work anymore and we couldn't access it. And um, we had to disqualify them. So just make sure that your links are live, that everything is uploaded properly and that your work samples are on there. Um, and then I will pass it on to Arsmer and Cornelius for tips for applying. And then I'll close out talking about some events and then we'll move to Q&A. Thank you so much, Christina. So tips. 
when presenting an idea or proposal, we do not necessarily require you to bring us a proposal of a project or a work. You can most certainly come into this residency wanting to pursue research, wanting to uh, enhance your practice, but you need to illustrate that to us. You need to let us know why you need Ari to do this thing. How do we fit into the conversation of whatever it is that you're trying to do? And if you have a big idea, if you have a big proposal or a big project that you want to do, plan ahead. Make the decision early on about how you're going to spend the money that you will receive and the timeline. You have a month. So what can you get done in that month? Can this project happen in a month? Will you need more time? Is maybe your time in the residency just to start the process of that project? Think about those things ahead of time. Most certainly, we love to see big projects, but understand that when you come to us and you have it already down how you'd like to move forward and have a timeline and already a budget of how you'd like to spend your money towards these things, it makes it so much easier for us to help you bring that project to fruition. And we do not ask you to give us a budget. We do not, we do not ask for that. But we're talking about doing internal work to make sure that whatever project you want to actualize, we can help you do that smoothly and fluidly. Choose a month that's open. Choose a month where you can completely dedicate yourself to this experience. As we said before, we understand that things happen. So we're not talking about emergencies. We're not talking about those occurrences. We're talking about looking at your calendar, really taking the time and saying, for this month, I'm going to completely dedicate myself to being in this space. And of course, to learn more about different projects that have already happened here in the park, please go to our website, look at our alumni. You might know some of these folks, ask them about their experience, ask them about how they spent their time. It'll definitely give you insight on how you can capitalize on this residency. I turn it over to Cornelius. Yes, and to add on to also just in terms of preparing your application, all the things our summer said, echoing a million times um, to really think it through. It shows an application who's thought through how their work applies to this environment, applies to ARI, what makes sense, um, working in this environment, um, or where they, what they want to explore, you know, and, and at the end of the day, the application is telling you, talking about storytelling, you know, you're conveying these ideas to us um, and to those on the jury panels and being able to fully express that well really does help your application go smoothly and concisely and, and allowing people to see your vision very early on in your application. Um, and in addition to ARI, you can definitely continue to get involved with us by visiting Everglades National Park, subscribing to our newsletter, following us on Instagram at ARI Everglades. And on our Instagram, there's plenty of content and things about past fellows interviews and all sorts of things that you can kind of see what has come out of the, the residency itself from past artists, but also exploring our website, airy.org, um, and also our YouTube, which has Airy Ask videos that have been recorded and talk about the other artists' experience where you can get more insight um, about that, and also to attend upcoming events that you can keep posted through our social media and newsletter about what's to come next. Yeah, and then to add to that, so links for our website, for YouTube, for those things, like our Instagram really is a good place to do that through our link tree. Um, and we have lots of content. Look at the reels, watch the videos, watch past talks. Like we do, I think one thing that's really great and thanks to Heather and her hard work on the website and for our socials, like we do have a lot of content out there. You can get a very good grasp what this is like. Our current fellow is doing an Instagram takeover right now. So you can read about what his experience has been. And um, it's great because every fellow does it differently. I just refreshed my page on accident. So let me fix that really quick. It's going to... Well, I can just talk about it while I um, pull it up. But... The last thing before we go to Q&A is just to talk through the different events that we have coming up. I think I'll be able to get it up. 
Um, so next Friday, this is a live stream only. Um, and so Alejandro Rodriguez is doing an airy ass live stream. So this is the event our store talked about where the artist talks about their practice and everything that they have been doing. And it's facilitated by curator and educator Z Lopez um, Del Carmen. And this is Friday, September 29th, 4 to 5 p.m. You can RSVP through our website or through the Everglades um, or through, sorry, our link tree. And um, this is, I think, one of the best ways you can really learn what the experience is like. And I think this is also going to be a really special area asks because Alejandro is going to be reading some of his work that he wrote while he was in the Everglades. And especially if you're interested in the literary aspect, um, he's a playwright. And so he'll be going through his work and his writing. Um, then on October, 20, um, on October 19th, we have an area asks live stream and in-person event at Soho House's Miami Pool House with T. Elliot Mansa and Monica Sorrell. So this is gonna be an amazing event. We have limited spots for in-person, but it's completely free and open to anyone to RSVP to get the live stream link. So um, I would really encourage going to these events and staying connected and going on the live stream because that's gonna give you the first hand of experience of what you could look forward to. Um, and then I will pass it on to Arsmer to talk about Give Miami Day, and then we will move on to questions. So yes, November 16th is Give Miami Day. It is where all the organizations come together to seek donations to further their initiatives. Um, it would be beautiful um, to be supported in that way. Um, we put it out there that we'll be having different um, conversations around Give Miami Day. We'll be having different content, different activities. And so if you feel, you know, feel the, feel the love, please get, click on the link and give us some money for Give Miami Day. Okay, that's, that's as simple as that. Give us some money. Um, <laughs> so are we going to go ahead and go over to the questions? Yes. Yeah. I see some really um, good ones and thank you, Heather, for, she's like on it. <laughs> Yeah, sure. There's some that I uh, marked so you can see um, we would like to answer this live if you want to start with those, because there's some that I can filter out of here as well. OK. Um, Is it in the open? Start. Yeah. So uh, Akilah Brown. Yes. Uh, how do you define an emerging artist? I think I want to pass that over to Cornelius. How would you define an emerging <laughs> artist? Question of an emerging artist. Right. Um, I think it's a very open-ended question. Do you feel like you're breaking into your talent? I think what we try to show is that at this residency, we're open to people with not a bunch of professional experience of, or with a bunch of prof professional experience that there are no barriers to applying, that we really want to see people with fresh voices and people who are really thinking critically about the environment you know, you can have all these accolades, but are you really taking the time to intentionally look at the application and look at how your artistry can can work within this environment, can build on the stories of this environment or make a connection? So I think um, we're open to all artists. And I think emerging is a word just to use someone who may not have a bunch of experience in the industry, but definitely is grounded in their practice and pushing forward their own work with a unique voice. And yeah. I recognize it's good to see you again, Akila. I recognize that name and it's good to see you and I'm glad you're here. And the one thing I would add to that too is, you know, as Cornelius was saying, I think with emerging artists as well, is we do want to see like a consistent body of work that you've been dedicated to, to pushing and creating artwork, even if you haven't like been able to show as much as you would like. So it's also seeing that intentionality with practice and with images and that there's this been a consistent push to what you've been doing in your practice. Um, really, do you want to choose the next question? So the next one says, can we submit both visual and art written samples as well? Let's see, Lawrence Scales. Um, yes, I think it's open to the interpretation. I think especially this year with innovative storytelling being it. I think the part is convince us about these practices or show us how these practices in your artistic practice intersect and how do they complement each other. I think that has to be cohesive in the way in which you're approaching it. There are many interdisciplinary artists um, working in multiple practices that really complement and help bring the stories together. 
And I think that's what we want to see. If you are going to submit multiple mediums and multiple ways of working, how do they best ex exemplify your practice in your unique voice and why you're using these mediums are things that we would like to have see addressed um, in the application. So think well about how you write that and how you express the connections um, between the work itself. I don't know if Arsmer, you have anything to add to that. Also as an interdisciplinary artist who works with right. the visual. So, so yeah, I, well, I didn't know if this was a question of like, are we able to physically on the application submit both so if you're able to yeah christina can you can you answer that we do so um you can we have an interdisciplinary box and then you have the option of other to specify what interdisciplinary means for you mm -hmm. um i would say because um as like a tip if let's say that like you're literary but you also do some visual but literary is your main focus i personally let me know what you guys think too i would personally recommend choosing literary mm -hmm. and then like Including images and having images in as well, because okay. there is an advantage, I think, to especially if you're literary or performance, we typically have less of those applicants. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be something that will make you stand out. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, now, don't force anything. If you're visual, be visual. We want visual artists. We want those things. But um, you can click interdisciplinary. But I would say if you have a primary medium, I would click that one that best represents you. And then you can always add it's like if you click a discipline, you can still add audio, you can still add images. It, your options of mediums aren't minimized based on the discipline you choose. So I that would be my recommendation for that. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> uh, the next one, do you have advice for folks not based in Everglades, Florida area to talk about the relationship, potential relationship to the land? I'm, I don't, I'm going to assume that you mean, um, for folks who have not grown up here, who have not grown up here or don't really like know about the Everglades, Florida, like what conversations should be had or how do you create a, a streamline or a connectivity? Um, transparency, we are not looking for people to create something uh out of nothing we are not looking for people to create a conversation that they're not already trying to have um we understand that this is a very good residency that listen i'm an artist cornelius christina we are all artists we all know that when we see some money and a cabin to live in for a month we're on it we will do what we need to do right but the reality of it is, is that you cannot force a conversation if organically that conversation is not already being had in the work. So, you know, we appreciate people educating themselves. We appreciate people wanting to educate yourself. But if landscape is not attached to your conversation, that's okay. Come back to us. Maybe some somewhere down the line it will be. But if it is something that you are serious about pursuing, then my suggestion is to do the research and take the time to do the research prior to even going into this application. Um, please do not let this 200 application quest, uh, thing cap uh, put you in a state of fear, guys. Um, you, We would rather see applications that look like time was spent, research was spent, care was spent, um, than you know reading something that and we can tell all of us here are artists all of us here <laughs> have done applications so we can tell when this is a rush job to just get it in versus someone who's been taking the time all year um to really put forth an a, you know an application that is thoughtful and intentional um but my suggestion is to do the research um there are plenty of places Miami History Museum you can look into their archives um, you can look into uh, the resource center. They have archives um, out in the Everglades. So, um, and there are plenty of books, movies that talk about the Everglades. If you Google Everglades propaganda, you'll get an entire list of, of works um, that talk just about the Everglades and movies um, and plays um, and conversations that are already being had mm -hmm. um, around the landscape. 
And could I add to that as well that like even when some of us have participated our summer and I, like a part of my application was that I'm interested in XYZ story because I have not been introduced to it. And I use the lens of my application as this is where I want to enter this conversation between my practice as a photographer, someone working in contemporary mediums in researching this history within this park. And, and I think it's really how you craft your application and it shows when you take a time to really think, you know, you don't have to necessarily have the experience of already working in art, like don't feel that pressure to feel like, oh, I already have this, but exactly what Arsimer said is like, don't force a narrative. Like something that you genuinely are interested in is something that you can present forward and be authentic to say, I've never done this, but this is where I want to take my practice. And this is why I think this residency is going to be the space that I can fully and authentically do that. And I think that helps us to see really that you are invested and you can show examples and talk through with your portfolio. Uh, these are pieces that are showing, you know, me crafting these things. And now here's where I'm going to take it and contextually relate it to the Everglades to take my practice to this new level. And I think that's something that can definitely be shown and talked about as you express your application. And you yeah, know, and I'll just add. Go ahead, Christina. Sorry, you can you can go. I will. I will. I was just I was just saying it's gonna and 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 if you do force it organically, it will come out in your time here. You this is this is not a luxury hotel in the middle of the Everglades. It's a beautiful <laughs> cabin. You do have AC, but you are in the Everglades. You are in this space and if you have not already yeah i know it's it's crazy if you have not already decided that you are going to be in this space and be educated by the space it will come out organically so you know don't force the narrative as cornelia said um and think about doing some intentional work on doing the research christina yeah and then the other thing i'll add to is um so i'm not from Miami or Florida. I'm from Texas. So I was just living in Massachusetts, but I, I had the privilege of being able to live in the Everglades for three months and um, working here. And I hadn't been there before. And I ended up like falling in love with it. And it was something that did reveal itself to me. So like, I think I echo everything they say. We don't want you to just come in because it seems great and a cool experience. We want intentionality of research. We want to have that dedication of where it melds into your practice in an expanse. But there are ways to do that intentionally, even if you're not like from here. So like, you know, even if you can't go to Miami or go to the Everglades because you're somewhere else in the country or you're somewhere else in the world, like you can still do that, but just make sure to have the intentional research and that work and basically everything that they already said and echoing that. Um, I guess the next question, I think it disappeared actually. Um, I saw like two that were about um, wanting to work. There was one that says, um, Marinda Davies saying, I would like to work in a site responsive way. So I won't have a clear idea of what the final outcome will be until I've spent time there. Are you looking for a clear outcome or can the application be open and speak more to the process? Um, Cornelius, I can let you start on that. I have a few thoughts as well, but um, as our artistic director. <laughs> I de it definitely can be more about the process. And this is what we're talking about when we're talking about how you do storytelling and how you innovate. Um, the residency itself, I'd like to premise that it's it's not necessarily solution focused. I mean, there are artists who come in with an idea of what their project is and what the final outcome is, but we really just wanna give you the space to research and embrace your practice. And it's almost giving you the time. And no matter how much you plan ahead, once you get there, you'll be open and exposed to so much that your project will just like continue to evolve in so many different ways that you really, um, as much planning as you do. So we really do encourage artists to be adaptive and, and to open with projects that can be open-ended and more process driven so that when they get to this space, they can continue to be inspired and actually do the research. So I would definitely say um, it can speak more to the process of how you work in other outcomes rather than being focused on a very specific outcome. And then let's see what other questions. There's one about the project. I couldn't hear you. What did you say? Oh, I said I was asking if Arsprey had anything to add about the yeah. site responsive project. 
Uh, mm-hmm. I don't. I'm gonna be honest with you. I was trying to answer some questions and got lost I'm in the. Lo- it's a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got lost. I, yeah. I'm seeing Heather's working hard. There's 43 yeah. answered questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I only see the open ones, so I'm just living in bliss and seeing the small ones. I will say with the site specific um response, you know, if you come and let's say you like in your application apply with a very specific project and you get there and you're like, no, I actually really want to focus on like um, the gator holes out here or the saltwater railroad or like you learn about something new and your project takes a different direction. Like what we want is passion and intention and care when it comes to these projects and planning ahead of time. So we're not going to make you, you know, in stone, set in stone what you put forward because the whole point of this is also immersive and experiential. And what that means is like change. So yes, come in with intention, but what that ends up being can change. So I hope that that, that like answers your question when it comes to that. Um, Cornelius, can you speak to, oh, Arsper, you're going to say something really? Quick? Yeah, I just want to jump to one because I, ans- I, I messed, I did something wrong. So I just want to say mm-hmm. the question. So Pablo, um, Pablo had the question, as a spoken word poet, recording artist, does this count as literary art or performance art? Either or. Um, it depends on what you would fall into, What where what is your main vehicle, what you feel is the main vehicle for you. Is it more literary or is it more performance? And if we got Everglades related material, should we include it as part of the application? Should we include work we included in past applications? Absolutely. Absolutely the more, the better for us. We want to understand and see the full scope of your work because a lot of times when we see artists, we're not just thinking about the residency. Sometimes our brains start going to beyond that. We also have Basel. We also have different projects that we work on. Cornelius is constantly doing things in other sectors. So we're looking at artists that we can also grow with. Um, we don't just stop at the residency. I say that we don't know how to let people go at Aerie. We don't. We once you are Aerie artist, you are Aerie artist no, for the I'm rest here. of your life. <laughs> okay. I was in 2022. Now I work here. Cornelius was put, <laughs> now you work here. Christina, she was just going to Harvard. Now she live here. She was in Texas. So this, we don't <laughs> let people go <laughs> at, at all. Heather included. Um, we're going to be at that wedding. Heather thinks it's a game, but we will definitely be at that wedding front and center. <laughs> so, you know, we, we love when we can see the full scope of your work so that we can think beyond the residency on other projects. We believe in advancement. We believe in developing. We believe in creating a culture of development. Um, we don't want to get dropped off y'all radar once y'all leave us. So we don't plan on dropping y'all. Mm-hmm. Okay. And one thing I just want to add, like, that was beautiful also. <laughs> but uh, so, Wanda, your question about the, it says, like, I thought that site responsive works were discouraged because of the precarious nature of the landscape. So how I interpreted the question with site responsive is means, like, you come to the Everglades, you experience it, you make a body of work, rather than, like, it is in the Everglades itself. When it comes to building work in the Everglades or interacting with the landscape in the Everglades, and this is something that um, you would learn more about as an artist, you are park volunteer and you have to respect the land. So, you know, branches, the smallest of petals cannot be removed from the Everglades. How you interact with the land is one of respect and understanding that this, this belongs to the environment and to the animals that are there. It is not ours to own or possess and it's not ours to alter. However, in the past, as you saw with some of the past photos, we have had art, temporary art installations in the park. So this could be a dance performance. This could be like the tissue quilt hung up. But why we talk so much about planning and intentionality is we work hand in hand with the park to make sure that the land is respected, that the animals are respected, and that the artist's work is respected. So that's why like planning and time, it is to make sure that if any art specific activation happens inside the park, it is done appropriately. But um, when we were answering that question, that was more in the line of like ideas, because as Arsmer said, we do stuff at Art Basel, we 
have stuff at museums. So like this work, ultimately, you know, our mission is about preserving the Everglades and telling those stories. To tell those stories, you have to go out of the environment to bring people in. So that's that outreach is a really big part of our mission. So a lot of our activations happen outside of it. And if we have activations inside the park, they'll usually be in the visitor center or our gallery, which I can't believe I didn't put in the presentation. Visit the Airy Nest Gallery. <laughs> like it's in Ernest Coe Visitor Center. It has our current work there. Um, please go and visit it. And you can see it without having to pay the park entrance fee. So you won't have to spend that $30, but I do recommend doing that. It is worth it to go into the park before you apply. So please do that. Um, I hope that that answered your question because yes, precarious nature of the landscape is what all this is about. So we don't want any of the work threatening it. Um, and I think, really, oh, for the answer that other question, I was going to say to round it back off, um, to just reiterate about the prompt and the idea of innovative storytelling as really seeing how your practice um, really brings people as a space, like we said, to, to educate, to celebrate, to talk about these themes within nature, climate, um, storytelling of the landscape in very authentic and intentional ways. I think is what we're really trying to get at in looking at how in contemporary times, there's so many different ways that artists are telling the stories of the landscape, how they are also embracing ways of reaching community through it. Um, an area we've had artists wanting to do workshops, different things who have shown us through even technology, how they're using different ways of storytelling and reaching people. So I think we're really dedicated to continuing to push the boundaries of storytelling um, and seeing the ways that artists choose to investigate these topics um, and relate whether it is an ecological focus or a cultural focus of this environment and how we can continue to bring communities into this space um, to talk, have these discussions, to create accessible points, to have discussions about climate and the environment and include all communities um, in these discussions. So really looking um, to see some exciting um, applications and hear about all of your practices and to learn more about each and every one of our applicants. Um, and just looking forward to the next cohort. Did we answer this, the writing sample? Would it be appropriate to provide a synopsis or other form of large project plan? I don't know. I tapped I, I tapped in and tapped out. But yes. Go ahead. <laughs> Any, everything. Uh, we, uh, well, the, the jurors take a lot of time in looking and assessing the work. So please, all your samples, all your proposals, all the conversations you're trying to have, as much as you can tell us, please provide that. What, a, what about refer really references? Like references? References. <laughs> Who should we ask? Who do you know? We can't answer that for you, Darren. What do you mean? <laughs> Who should you ask? Who do you know? <laughs> like really looking into people who know your practice well, right. speak well on your practice and who you are as an artist, as a storyteller, as someone um, but that would be defined by you and who you think can encapsulate that if we have to, you know, reach out and speak to people about your practice. Nicole asked how many filmmakers have been chosen for the residency and have shot narratives. It's interesting. I know we've had a lot of filmmakers. Yeah, yeah I can. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, so we <laughs> we have um, Monica Sorrell, who was just in residency in No Arts where you can speak more your practice. Last year, we had Anya Freer. Um, who's also a filmmaker. We've also had, um, I think filmmaker too can be expansive. We've also had artists. We had a musician who came in and then collaborated with a filmmaker that was commissioned to record his music performance throughout the Everglades. It's a past real Jose Elias. So, um, but for actual like dedicated filmmakers, um, we've had Monica Sorrell, whose Aries Asks is coming in October. And then we've also had artists who have collaborated with filmmakers. Um, I don't know if Cornelius Arts can add anything. And I add that I don't know necessarily, I can't fully remember if anyone's shot a narrative like film 
in the environment of the Everglades, but Open would love to hear what that looks like. Um, if that's something that you are interested in, a lot of our filmmakers do have other narrative work that they've shot in other spaces and done things in influence. And, and I think the um, I think we're open to all ideas. We really want to see um, the ways that people are thinking of telling these stories of the Everglades and open to new mediums and new ways um, that people are are thinking of bringing these stories to life. Is there an advantage of offering a reference compared to not doing so? What is it if so? I think if we need to understand your practice better, um, the references are an aid for us, but they are not a deciding factor. Um, if say, you know, we're we're just on the cusp of like understanding, okay, how this person fits into the conversation, a reference can help us to get to that place of like, ah, okay, now we understand. Um, this is the work maybe that they've done with this individual, or this person can explain how they take in your work or how they feel about your work. But it is not a deciding factor. Um, we really want to be hyper-focused on the work. Um, it's great to have, you know, glowing references and great folks. That is always helpful, um, but it's not a deciding factor. Um, and Christina Cornelius, you can add to that. Yeah, and I think you you captured it perfectly. It's not like we're even asking for a letter or anything specific. It's really just if it does get to that point where we have to really learn more about your practice or explore more, it definitely helps. If a personal reference will be better at sharing your art practice than a professional reference, is that acceptable? The application specifies professional. Well, I mean, see, here's the thing, right? My mama loves everything I do. You know, my mama loves everything I do, as most mamas do. Um, but we need more than that. We love your mother. We know that your mother is right. You are perfect. You are the best artist in the city of Miami or wherever you live at, you are. Um, but we'd like someone outside of your mama to tell us, you know, how they experience your work. This is not about validation. Um, this is about understanding fully what your practice entails and how we fit into that conversation. For a lot of folks, the work doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be in the Everglades to do it. You don't have to be in this landscape in order to create that sculpture or write that book. But having a reference, having someone where we can, you know, understand fully the conversation that you're trying to have through your work helps us to understand how we fit into the conversation. So yes, per personal references are great. Um, but also think very, think about the fact that, you know, I have colleagues that I work with who are also professionals. They're my friends, but they're also colleagues. Um, they're also people that I, that I do do work with, that I have been in development with. So these people also count as professional references, um, and know you in that space, in that capacity. Anyone who knows you by your work is a professional reference. Now, if it's somebody who you frequently see at the corner store and you just like give them a poem every day, but you don't really know what they do, we don't recommend you put them as a reference. We don't recommend you put the corner store homeboy as the reference, okay? Because we don't know what he does. We don't know. But <laughs> your colleague that works at the print shop that you've worked with for years, that has been printing your material for years, that's a professional reference. That's someone who can attest to seeing your work, knowing what you need, uh, been working with you, can speak to your work ethic. That's what we're looking for. And we're at one minute, so I'll turn it over to Christina. Yeah, we'll answer this one last question because I think it's a really good and... In I'm just... Sorry, I got distracted because another question came in. Heather is going to type that answer. So the one last thing we wanna and I wanted to answer was, I believe it was mentioned that there will be biologists on site. What kind of things do they do and how can they help us? I study biology as well as art. And I'm curious how much we can be a part of their own research. Um, 
we just had someone, Gal, or one of our last fellows who also did biology and animal studies. We absolutely love when there are interdisciplinary people coming in. Um, when it comes to being a part of their research, I don't think that we have ways to get engaged in that within one month. However, you have access to the South Florida Research Arsper, what's the name again? Yes, South Florida Collections. Um, and, yeah. and and basically these are different people who are part of the Everglades National Park sectors. So you yes. have like the whoever's in charge of research and, and science, soil science, you know, if we have the time, if you tell us early on, like once you're chosen and you know for a fact you want to talk to that person, we can set that up. But as Christina said, having them be like a very deep and intimate part of your practice, that may need a lot more time and a lot more um, red tape, if you will. But we definitely have people, uh, we have the hydrology tour, we have hydrologists that we work with um, who will take you out um, and show you the work that they do along the waterways. Um, so yeah. And yeah, that yeah, and some of it can be very spontaneous to what yes. research is in the park at the time. We had one fellow who just lucked up and got to go on controlled burn rides in a helicopter yeah. around the park. Um, so it really depends on what research is being done and what, at that time. And, you know, just hopefully, but I think um, if it's something that you're looking for application-wise, you can really talk more about what you're interested in and how you can see it applying to this space. And then if it aligns or we can make something work, we try our best um, and, and you know, things also happen spontaneously, as I mentioned. I will echo that it, it is very seasonal, um, you know, during the on season and the off season, whether it depends what the research is happening, but what's great about living, you live in actual park housing. So like your neighbors are scientists who are there for a season who are doing mm -hmm. research on like a invasive lizard. Like that's, that's what a neighbor was for this summer. So um, it really is such an expansive place, especially for that kind of work. So I would definitely make sure to put that in your application. Um, but thank you so much for everyone who came and took the time to ask questions. Um, if you make sure to look at our website, please follow us on Instagram, make sure to RSVP for these upcoming events. Um, I would highly recommend that before you email to ask questions, please look through our website. We have almost everything there. If you do have a question, email info at airy.org. Um, so if you have specific questions that aren't answered through the website, you can go there. But um, we hope to see you at events. We are excited that the potential of one of you guys being in our future cohort. And um, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us.